it's great to follow Ira's uh, words with uh, what I'll be presenting, which is the uh, an update on uh, the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons and uh, how it relates to the proposed Middle East Weapons of Mass Destruction Free Zone Treaty. As Ira alluded uh, in on July 7th, 2017, 122 states voted for the TPNW at the UN in New York. Um, one vote, one uh, country voted against it. That was the Netherlands, the only uh, NATO country that participated in the discussions, and Singapore uh, abstained. Um, the uh, nuclear weapon states uh, boycotted it, as did uh, many of their allies, including every uh, NATO country except for the Netherlands. Um, 83 states so far have signed the TPNW as of, as of now. Uh, the most recent one was Sudan. Um, 44 states have signed and ratified or acceded to the TPNW, nine since the pandemic started, which is kind of impressive, considering that parliaments are having difficulty meeting right now. And uh, so at this point, six states are now needed to ratify the treaty before it enters into force. This is a little graphic that ICANN did showing just how close we are. Uh, with only st six states parties needed, um, it may be possible that the TPNW will meet the 50 state requirement as specified in the treaty by as early as October 2020. Um, this will set in motion the 90 day calendar for an of its official entry into force as an international treaty as certified by the United Nations. Uh, the TPNW could then possibly enter into force during the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty Review Conference uh, on between the 4th and 29th of January next year or soon afterwards. Um, and as it says in the treaty, the first meeting of states parties shall be convened by the Secretary General of the United Nations within one year of the entry into force of this treaty. So possibly sometime next year, early uh, the following year, uh, the treaty will enter into force and uh, we'll have the first meeting of states parties. This is a breakdown of where different countries stand who uh, among the 144 states that we believe are likely to support the treaty. There's 44 that have signed and ratified and obviously they are now states parties. We have 41 uh, signatories, uh, 48 additional countries voted for adoption and then we have 11 presumed supporters as well. Um, you'll see that the countries that have been signing and ratifying have been uh, from uh, Latin America, the Caribbean, uh, Africa, uh, South and Southeast Asia, and uh, Asia Pacific regions. Um, the, uh, with very few at thus far signing from uh, the Middle East or from Europe, uh, there were very few who voted for adoption from Europe, but it's significant that Sweden and Switzerland, which have treaty obligations with NATO, still have not uh, signed or ratified. Um, and most of the countries of the Middle East at this point have not signed or ratified. And I'm going to the next slide, which will show you exactly among the proposed Middle East weapons of mass destruction free zone. Um, so far, only Palestine has signed and ratified Algeria, Libya, and Sudan are signatories, and uh, 16 countries uh, voted for adoption. Uh, we have one presumed supporter, Somalia was not present for the vote, and then one presumed opponent, Israel was not also present for the vote. Um, wanted to sort of give a, an overview of the overlap with other WMD negotiations and treaties. Um, the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. Um, there, it, within the region, there are 21 states parties, one non-signatory, which is Israel. Uh, Chemical Weapons Convention, 20 states parties, uh, and uh, one has signed but not ratified, which is Israel, and one is a non-signatory, which is Egypt. Uh, with the Biological Weapons Convention, we have 17 states parties, Three have signed but not ratified, Egypt, Somalia, and Syria, and there are two non-signatories, uh, Djibouti and Israel. 
And then just, this is less relevant, but there are only nine states parties, uh, it, or only nine uh, countries that are in the area encompassed by the African Nuclear Weapons Free Zone Treaty. And of them, five have not at this point ratified, but have signed the treaty. Djibouti, Egypt, Morocco, Somalia, and Sudan. So uh, having the treaty of the, on the prohibition of nuclear weapons uh, enter into force will place nuclear weapons, the deadliest WMD, in the same category as the other WMDs, legally banned and internationally stigmatized. Um, the next step, as Ira was saying, uh, toward nuclear weapons abolition will involve nations that possess those weapons, their allies and their actual and potential adversaries. And this is where the regional efforts come into play, such as this exciting renewed effort to establish a WMD zone uh, in the Middle East, free zone in the Middle East. Uh, as we've seen with previous treaties and agreements, they can only be resolved when all sides temporarily set aside their grievances and embrace their common humanity. Uh, IPP and W and our allies within ICANN encourage states in the Middle East to follow through on their votes of support for the nuclear ban treaty by signing and ratifying one. In some cases, those steps will need to be part of a greater agreement, uh, again, what Ira was talking about, uh, that includes other WMDs and possibly other as critical parts of the decision. And we believe the brilliance of the WMD FZ in the Middle East is that it attempts to begin this conversation and we had the honor of attending the first uh, conference on the establishment of the Middle East zone free of uh, nuclear weapons and all other weapons of mass destruction in New York uh, last November. And we're very impressed with almost full participation of the proposed countries and a very uh, constructive and positive um, conversation and very respectful conversation amongst countries that have really deep disagreements. And it gave us a lot of hope that there is a possibility that this treaty might have the ability to move forward at some point and hopefully soon. Thank you. That's uh, it for my presentation right now.